Good evening, everyone. My name is Jonathan Landsman. Our, I am our board chair. This is the December general board meeting for OCEAN, Oakland Community Health Network. Uh, first item on the agenda is to call the meeting to order. I'm doing that right now. Second is to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Next would be our roll call. Sheila, if you would, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Young? Here. Mr. Furman? Present. Ms. Nami Dyer? She did give prior, prior notice that she would not be present tonight. Mr. Cowan? Present. Mr. Torres? Present. Dr. Hans? Here. Ms. Newman? Here. Ms. Root? Here. Ms. Woodruff? Here. Ms. May? Here. Mr. Landsman? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, next up would be the um, motion to approve our meeting agenda for this evening. Is there um, who would like to make that motion? So moved. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Support. Thank you, Melkaya. So it's been moved to support by Melkaya. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, so we've approved our board agenda. Next up is our public comment. Um, we have two of these. Each person is allocated uh, or allowed to have as much as five minutes for public statement. Um, and we have uh, sign up for this for the beginning of the meeting. We have online. We also have uh, a second opportunity at the end of the near the end of the meeting as well. Uh, is there anyone set for online who would? There's nothing online. Nothing online, okay. Then uh, in person we have uh, at least one person signed up and that's Fred coming. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, Fred, have the floor. Or pass out your paper and, okay, we'll split it up, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. It's working good. All right. Now, the one page that you're getting would be where I mark. So it's written on sound, so I don't have to say it in five minutes, but I'll, I'll say a few words introducing that. Uh, it was pointed out to me that the first the first bullet is, is kind of obsolete now because I wrote this a little while ago, and the, uh, the lame duck session was still active. So we're kind of beyond that. But uh, the key point here is that I want to emphasize that you as board members are representatives of the people of this county, and you're there to represent what this county needs in terms of mental health services. And you need to be an active representative, not just here, but at the state level. And you're, the uh, CMH Board Association is where you have a particular opportunity to get together with other board members of other agencies and deal with what the problems are with the system. And there are serious problems. Now, the, the other paper that I've given you has key points about what really needs to be fixed about the system, fundamental things. A couple of things that are fundamental that I want to highlight is first of all accountability. I'm not talking about accountability necessarily of people who are in direct contact with people providing services, although it affects there. But I'm talking about accountability that ends up, up going up the chain to the legislature and the administration who are not accountable today because they don't, legislators don't really know what's going on and the department doesn't want them to know what's going on. So they're not accountable, either one of them. 
And when, they, when we say that there's more money needed, that people are underpaid, you know, they, they can't get people to staff the, the, the direct, care, direct care works, they don't get it. These are menial jobs to them. These should not be menial jobs. So accountability is a fundamental thing. We need accountability that is an independent agency which is overlooking the shoulders of the system and the administration and finding out what's going wrong and saying this is it, making it public, telling the legislator what's wrong and making sure they understand and having the power that if things aren't getting fixed to bring legal action. Michigan Production and Advocacy Services did that when it was formed. It doesn't do that anymore. It was kind of replaced by recipient rights and recipient rights doesn't do the job. First of all, recipient rights needs to be part of that oversight that says we're looking directly at what's going on and we're not getting filtered and, and the message doesn't get up, this, up the chain. We need to be looking at from an oversight perspective throughout the state, say what's wrong, let's point it out. The other thing I think I see as a fundamental system problem, which is critical for mental health, but it's also critical in other, other areas, and that is managed care, where money is priority, not people. So when, when you, everything is limited by what the insurance company is gonna pay, Everything is limited by what the administration is going to pay. And mental health, that's, that's really critical. So people are doing what they can with the money that they have, but they can't do what needs to be done. And the flip side of that is people who are in the system are just getting by trying to do what they have to do, what they get paid for, and they can't, don't have the time or the money to go beyond that, to be real professionals. And they're all, well, I did my job. I'm, I'm done, I just can't take it anymore. We've got to be paying for professionals, giving them time to do that, and not paying people to not do their job, not to do what they know is right. So accountability and managed care, which means making sure that people are paid and incented to do what is right for the people they serve, not what's paid for first. Now beyond that, the system right now, there's hundreds of thousands of people in, in Michigan who are mentally ill, not getting any services. They don't have private insurance, they don't have Medicaid, and they're not in crisis. They don't get anything until they get in crisis. Then they end up in jails and prisons or worse. And we complain about how many people are in jails and prisons. That's costing a lot more money. We should be taking care of those people when they first need it. They don't go in crisis. They don't end up in jails and prisons, and not only that, they end up in the system better off, and they aren't as sick. And they might actually get better and not cost so much. So we're just wasting money by the way everybody get in crisis so we can house them, and secondly, not give them the therapy they need to get thinking better in spite of their illness. They may still have problems with their illness, but like PTSD, the biggest problem is therapy, not medication. And that's true for a lot of other people who are on the edge and, and are gonna get worse. Children, another problem where children, many children have problems at a young age. Some children have problems because of the environment they're in. They're living day to day in crisis. And how do you deal with that? It's PTSD for children. We gotta deal with that. This is a mental health problem. CMH needs to be dealing with that. We don't need another agency to come in. We don't need to train teachers to be therapists or doctors. We don't need more counselors in the schools. We need the people who are there able to say to CMH, here's somebody who's got a problem, help us. We Thank wanna you. teach, you wanna serve. So that's that, both of it, therapy, children, and unserved. Those are all things that ought to be addressed. And I, I believe that if we were doing it right, it wouldn't cost any more. Right. But to get there, it's gonna cost something. 
right now we've got six billion dollars of federal money nobody knows to do with because they got to spend it on something one time they don't want to spend it on something that they have to continue to spend on because that's future taxes this is something they need to be doing right now thank to you. fix the mental health system and get past the bubble thank and you, do it right thank you Mr. So please take a look at the rest of the issues we appreciate your thank public you. comments and your feedback all right thank you is there anyone else that would like to have public comment this evening all right. as a reminder there is a second opportunity uh, towards the end of our meeting you'll see it in our agenda thank you um, next up on the agenda is the executive report okay. all right so Fred sort of said it earlier so he broke my um, my opening line the elections are finally over it's finally gotten quieter for the remainder of 2022 the countywide smart proposition passed transportation has and continues to be a problem to the members we serve our board is now asking how can we ocean um, leverage some of this new additional funding to expand the transportation help with some of the solutions that we can offer to our members we serve I know that our leadership with Dana is looking into that and so you'll be seeing stuff coming this year to hear more kinds of things that we can do we're also looking to see how smart will be expanding services across the county specifically uh, to those we serve so it'll be interesting um, lame duck it's over it was pretty quiet there were efforts to get approval of bills 597 and 98 but they did fail thank you thank you to everyone who uh, was an advocate and reached out to the senators and the, the house uh, representative folks to make sure that it that it died and it stayed dead during the lame duck um, so 2022 is over but we still need to stay vigilant there will be someone there will be some center that will continue to push in the coming year to push that kind of agenda again uh, and we need to make sure that it doesn't happen so um, rest up enjoy the holidays come January we're going to be back into fighting in the trenches again I just know it um, CMHA seems like we just had a full conference I know it was in October and we're talking about the CMHA conference over in Kalamazoo February 7th and 8th so that's Tuesday Wednesday for board members please look at your calendars I'm hoping some of you can get there and uh, join some of us in Kalamazoo on that Monday and then into Tuesday Wednesday okay and I'm going to circle back around once I finish my comment because we have some other things on our calendar uh, thanks to all at this time of year I just want to take a moment and just say thank you to my fellow board members motion board members and your active involvement to the board uh, for those that don't know to the public this is a volunteer commitment so that's in addition to everyone's other jobs supporting their communities and supporting their families so I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you to our ocean leadership and staff Dana and your crew and the folks that are out there and virtual or worked a long day already in their home and relaxing uh, thank you for all of your efforts to the core providers and their leadership and staff and I see at least one core provider here Brent hello um, thank you for your all the folks and all the things that you do to support the people we serve and then most importantly to the direct providers and their staffs the folks that are in the trenches these are the people that work tirelessly sometimes around the clock dedicating to supporting the nearly 25,000 people we serve and the families of theirs at supporting the mission to inspire hope to empower people and to strengthen communities it's an amazing job it's not easy uh, it's a calling and uh, I really appreciate all the work that you guys do so thank you um, thank you says we wrap up this year and we move ahead to the next year thank you very much um, before I put this down I know that we've got a couple calendar items regarding CMAG um, meeting in February is it Sheila um, the CMHA is February um, 7th and 8th so right, but we also that's a Monday a, Tuesday right but we also have a regional the Tri-County um, Macomb is has the date of um, January 26th uh, which is our study session date 
Right. And um, to my knowledge, it is um, it is virtual. And then um, so. And then we also have, and so it's on the same week as our board meeting. No, it isn't. So it's the week after. Correct. Okay. So the 26th, if we take the, if you utilize that for the metro meeting, um, it runs a little bit of a problem going into February because the, there's a short month, so you would run the board meeting and a study session in the same week. So um, one option is to consider is to run January and February board study session on February 2nd, and that would cover both months. For January and February and the reason we bring it up like that is because at the end of February because that's a short month our study session is the same week as our board meeting so we could conceivably take the agenda items for January and the agenda items from February put them on the one Thursday on the first week of February and then it would span both January and February's board study stuff yeah because the following week would be the CMHA concert and then the board meeting. Yes, Christine. Um, let's just keep in mind, I believe February 2nd is the RAC committee, right? So we wouldn't want to start before they finish, right? So that goes from 4 to 5. So you could, the, the study session runs from 5 to 8. Okay. So you could. Yes, Dr. Hans. What, will we be able to cover all the items for the two months? Well, tentatively on the agenda right now, you didn't have any marked earmarked for February, but you could cover all the January in that three-hour time span that's already allotted. Okay. Is there anyone that would have a tough time doing that Thursday the 2nd? Jonathan, would the um, executive meeting then be uh, at 5 o'clock on the 2nd as well? Yep. Okay. Um, I, I would have, because uh, um, I have a, uh, a board meeting with my school district on the first Thursday of the month. But um, you could proceed without me if I'm the only one. I could, I'm sure somebody can inform me of what happened. All right. Malkaya, because you're on the executive board, too, that would be on that same day. Does that work? Yes. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, I guess we'll move the we'll move the study session for January and February to February second. Okay. So this um, you're going to keep them. You're gonna, we're going to confirm the metro date on the 26th and keep, and move the study session to the second to cover January and February. Yep. Correct. Okay. And then that way we don't have any meetings that are on the same week as any of our board meetings for those two months. Correct. Okay. All right. That concludes my report, and we'll move on to other reports. Policy Management Committee. I don't have a report tonight. Thank you. Treasury. Thank you. Um, the board has received the October monthly finance report and the monthly trends. Uh, it's kind of hard to get too many trends uh, because it's the first month of our fiscal year. I've spoken with our CFO and she indicates there were no remarkable or special financial events in October. The budget looks on track. So unless someone has a question for Anya, uh, that's the conclusion of my report. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have two action items. Um, CEO, PTO, HR request, and also the MCHE, the MHA uh, resolution. So let's start with the first one. Uh, there was discussion at uh, the Committee of the Whole on the CEO, PTO, um, HR request. Um, did the Finance Committee um, discuss that in Voter recommendation? Yes, the Finance Committee uh, did vote for to recommend um, the requested payment on the PTO time, and then we did receive, uh, the board did receive additional information with the calculations so that we've all been fully apprised of the financial dimensions. Okay, and it was recommended? 
Yes. Okay. Then I'll look for a motion to approve the motion for the CEO PTO HR request. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? Support. Thank you, Mr. Furman. Is there any discussion? Hearing nothing, we'll move to I, I have a, a question. Oh, yes. Uh, so is this, uh, my question would be this, that this, uh, as we discussed at the committee of the whole, this is the first time we are facing an issue like this. Uh, will that be in the policies as well, or is it a one-time request, or is is this in the in the uh, HR policies of the, this? Uh, Ed, Edna, would you like to answer that for us? Thank you. Thank you. I'm Edna White, HR Director for OCHN. I can confirm that this is a unique request. It's uh, separate from any policy issues that we have in our HR policies. This is a unique situation related to a, a technical uh, event in our uh, human resources information system that did not post the correct amount of hours for uh, our CEO, and we like to correct that and make her whole. And uh, my follow-up is that, will this be a precedent for future events like this? We don't usually see events like this, but I would say that this is no different than we would seek to address for any employee at OCHN. Uh, anytime we discover that there's been an error or an anomaly, we take a look at how quickly can we correct the problem and how can we make the individual whole. So I would say if this were to happen to any staff member at OCHN, we would have taken the same action. So what was recommended would reflect what we would do for anyone in the organization. But because she's our employee, we have to vote on that, correct? That is correct. Any other questions or comments? Okay, now a roll call. Ms. May? Yes. Ms. Woodruff? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Ms. Newman? Yes. Dr. Hans? Yes. Mr. Torres? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Furman? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Lanzen? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Edna. Um, so the second item was the MJ resolution annual review. Um, that came out of finance as well. Is there a resolution to continue it? Thank you, Mr. Cowan. Support. Thank you, Ms. Newman. So there's been a motion, a second. Is there any discussion or questions on the MCHE? Mr. Chair, just, yes. just so that everyone knows, it's the Michigan Consortium for Healthcare Excellence is the organization we're talking about. So there's actually a there's there's a there's a name name behind that acronym. So, thank you. Um, I'd like to clarify one thing uh, with Ms. Holly that there's no new resolution as stated in the motion. So, I don't know if you have any questions. It's just the annual review. Or you. Can... So it's renewing our support. So this is an amended resolution, actually. So each year it's renewed. So uh, you're amending and approving the amended resolution that came out of the cow. Okay. Okay. 
Are people comfortable with that? Is there anyone who's not? No. Okay. Can we just re we'll reread re the, the motion? motion? Yeah. Okay. The motion is to approve the renewal. Do I have that right? Okay. To, the motion is to renew the, uh, the renewal of the MCHE resolution. And it was offered by uh, Mr. Cowan, seconded by Ms. Newman. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Does the motion have to include the fact that it was amended? So I think that was kind of on the record, but yeah, it would be requesting the approval of the amended resolution or the uh, renewal of the resolution as amended. Okay, so that motion, uh, would you like to state it for me? Sure. Uh, I can't make the motion, but on behalf of Mr. Lansman, uh, can we have a motion to accept or approve the renewal of the MCHE resolution annual review um, resolution as amended? Thank you. See, it's not as easy for me either. It's a tongue twister, for sure. <laughs> All right. And we did have a motion, and we did have a second, if it's acceptable by the board. Um, if there's no other discussion, then let's do a roll call vote, please, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lance and uh, Yes, please, go ahead. Does he have to correct his motion? I guess you're going to have to correct your motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just accept the, I can just accept the motion as, as read. That can, be a substitute, that can be a substitute as long as the maker and the supporter are in agreement. And I'm in agreement. Okay. So if and Melkaya is in agreement, we're fine. Thank you. And Melkaya, is that acceptable? Thank you. Okay, now we'll do the, is there any further discussion? <laughs> okay, all those in favor of this motion, we're going to do a roll call. <laughs> Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Furman? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Torres? Yes. Dr. Hans? Yes. Ms. Newman? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Ms. Woodruff? Yes. Ms. May? Yes. Mr. Lansman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And we move on to the next item, which is approval of the Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority resolution for a contract. Um, this is a contract extension? So this is an annual uh, new annual. contract because each year is bound uh, separately from the year before. Uh, so that's why it's not presented as a renewal per se. Okay. It's identified on uh, at least my uh, item here as a renewal. That's why I wondered. It's a, okay. So is this was also discussed at the Finance Committee? No, it wasn't. So this item was not, I'm sorry. So this is Kalana Ali, Chief Legal Officer for OCHN. Um, what you have before you tonight is the Municipal Risk Management um, authority, which is our insurance carrier for our organization. Uh, each year we uh, work with them to renew our binder of insurance to cover, including our, uh, excuse me, residential, I'm sorry, not residential, but real property. Uh, so this insurance policy runs from January 1 through January 1 of 2024, from 2023 onward. And the amount of this year's binder is for $114,676. Um, we've been with the MMRMA since 1999. Our first insurance policy was bound on January 1st of that year. Um, and over the years, uh, we have been able to collect a dividend, uh, which is considered a savings to us from our premium based on our uh, fitness as a member um, by not having many claims or any claims at all. So this year, we will receive a, a credit or a dividend or distribution in the amount of 62000 I believe it's $595. Um, in the previous year, I believe it was 42000 And that is kind of um, equivalent to how our premium has changed over the year. And this year, it's a little higher than last year's, just given the state of COVID and uh, as many claims. I will note that we saw one of the minor changes at about a 2.5% bump, whereas others saw up to 12 and 15% um, increases in their rate. So I think we're in a very good position, and given the amount, if you actually uh, net the amount, we're actually looking at about approximately a $48,000 or something like that. I'm not good at math, but 
cost for our actual uh, coverage this year. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, this renewal of insurance with MMRMA for the amount of 111. I'm sorry, one hundred fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy-six dollars. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Young. Support. Thank you, Mr. Petoris. Uh Is there any discussion on this motion? Just, just one small uh, comment. Um, the authority uh, is very well respected. It's one of the uh, leading, one of the two leading, um, I will call municipal or governmental insurers in the state. I think the increase is very modest, uh, and I'm supportive of the uh, renewal of the contract for insurance. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Newman. Ms. Ali, was there any particular reason why this wasn't brought to us in uh, the cow? Yes, so we did not receive the actual uh, contract for the for binder until after the cow had occurred. So I believe it was like a Thursday or so when we received the actual agreement. So not intentionally, it's just when the underwriters got it back over to us to get it approved. Sure. So I want to be sure. We are actually going to pay $114,000, but it would have been $114,000 plus another $62,000? Or is it a credit off of the $114,000? So we are, our premium amount is $114,676. However, because we are a member in good standing and we pay into the retention fund, we will receive a distribution of $62,595. So if you net the two, you're left with believe, just under 50000 or something like so, that. Okay, so our out-of-pocket is the net between 114 and 62. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and right now, because that's uh, January 1st through January through probably January I'm sorry, December 31st? It's January 1 through January 1. January 1 to policy, yes. So we're in the grace period right now? No, it hasn't started yet, 23. So we have a little bit, of, we have a couple of weeks before the next We're still year. in December. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's, I'm ready to go into the new year. Okay. I, I need it. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or comments or foolish comments like mine tonight? All right. Hearing none, um, let's do a roll call to... Motion to approve this. Ms. Woodruff? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Ms. May? Yes. Ms. Newman? Yes. Dr. Hans? Yes. Mr. Torres? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Furman? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Landsman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, next up is the um, motion for consent agenda. Uh, these are the items on it. Would anyone like to make a motion to for the consent agenda? Thank you, Ms. Root. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Yvette. Um, there's no discussion on these, uh, just a roll call vote to approve the agenda, consent agenda. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Furman? Yes. Mr. Cowan? Yes. Mr. Torres? Yes. Dr. Hans? Yes. Ms. Newman? Yes. Ms. Root? Yes. Ms. Woodruff? Yes. Ms. May? Yes. Mr. Lansman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda are, I believe, the board reports, or is other, it's other business. Do we have something for other business? Okay. So we'll move on to um, board reports. First item on board reports would be recipient rights. Yeah. Uh, Dr. House? In the recipient rights advisory committee met, met on December 1st at 4 p.m., uh, the key items that were discussed were a director's update uh, by Ms. Suder. Uh, the monitoring is up and starting in January. So this will include uh, monitoring of fear of retaliation and stigma. The first uh, volunteer group will start in January with monitoring of clubhouse and drop-in centers. 
Uh, the, the second main item was fiscal 23 goals were finalized. Uh, a calendar was developed for, or is going to be developed for training of RRAC members. Uh, it will also generate a list of areas where uh, potential changes that may be needed can be discussed and, and hopefully implemented. Um, and any other current issues that come up during the year will also be discussed. Uh, this will be part of the manager's and director's report every month. Uh, the calendar for the uh, 2023 was finalized, and uh, the next meeting will be January 5th at 4 p.m. That's my report. Thank you for your report. Um, I know... Uh, Rena's not here tonight. Did she file a report first to read? Okay, thank you. All right, I don't think we have any other committee reports, so we move on. This is the second opportunity for uh, public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to make public comment? Not locally? All right, is there anyone online? No one's online. All right, thank you very much. Then we move on, and the next is um, our director's report. Dana, you have the floor. Good evening again, Dana Lassen, B CEO. Um, at first, I want to take an opportunity to really thank the team of CEO. The I call it my team. It's not our staff. It's our team because we have a group of very dedicated leaders and people who serve every day. So I really wanted to take the opportunity and highlight some of our accomplishments. In addition to the report I provided, I just wanted to bring to the attention the board of the things that we set out to do and we actually did. And part of that also is going to inspire us to do things that align with our strategic plan. So we would also like to look at how we report and analyze what we do much better and tie it back to that strategic plan. So my hope is in the next year to provide more data so that we know we're making decisions based on the data that we have and what we're doing is going in the right direction. So in terms of expanding access, um, we did expand the hours of operations for families that need um, crisis services and support, but more than that, also looking at true access in terms of determining if someone needs a routine service, a urgent care service, or an emergency service in terms of our crisis services. So that was really important because we did see a need, and we continue to look at how we can be more available for people so they don't have to use the hospital ED for services when we're not available to them. So that's really critical. We also expanded access by offering up a school mental health navigator program that was funded by our Oakland County Board of Commissioners and Oakland County Executive in terms of utilizing ARPA dollars to help fill in the gap for individuals, particularly in the school area, to make sure that there is connection between people who seek services from the school or even just a referral information for uh, a teacher to give to a family. And so that program started in August, and we've worked with a number of different schools already, and so you'll see that attached to my report. The other thing that was really critical is working with Oxford, and in doing that, we had the first part of the school mental health navigation program in a sense. We also offered to pay high deductibles and co-pays for families that we know is often a barrier to seeking uh, mental health services. So those are the programs we're really proud of, and we know that we need to do more promotion of those programs so people know that they're available. The other thing I'll say in terms of improving crisis, this is an area that will also be our priority in the coming year. Uh, I'm proud to say we opened a soft opening of our Youth and Family Care Connection uh, Center on the grounds of the county exec in the RCC, the Resource and Crisis Center building, and it's going well. Still some work to do before we fully open and make ourselves available, but people are now coming to the um, access point of the Youth and Family Care Connection Center to seek services, and they're getting their services needs met. We also hire additional co-responders. Um, we also increase trainings for CIT, the Crisis Intervention Training Teams. We actually hosted one last month right here in this room 
and to make sure that we continue to train our law enforcement community on how to interact with individuals who are experiencing a mental health crisis. We have ongoing efforts to work with our partners, our providers in the community on the certified community behavioral health clinics, and we have Mr. Brentworth here. Um, he is one, the Easter Seals, Mark, um, Easter Seals, I should say, and then CNS Healthcare is also a CCBHC. And we also continue to work with all of our core provider agencies on behavioral health homes, opiate health homes, SUD health homes, are also expanding in our area. So those are all a part of the, the um, push for more integration in healthcare and physical health and mental health and behavioral health. But I also say in looking at all those social determinants of health, making sure that we're connecting people to services and other resources that they need because we can address the behavioral health or mental health need, but if the person is homeless or the person doesn't have transportation or all these other needs met, it makes it really difficult for them to engage in other services. Um, our children's system of care is also another area, and it, we touched upon it with the youth and family care connection, but also in terms of extending and expanding our crisis service for children in other ways. And we want to look at prevention. How do we educate families and support them so their children or family members don't go into full-blown crisis? So what can we do to work in, in our community to make sure that we're reaching schools? We do have a youth-led advisory council, very similar to our Citizens Advisory Council that was just started with um, members of the communication team. So we're really excited to hear from people served or people who need information about services and to hear from the youth in the community about what they need and what they want to see from us. Uh, our provider network relations is another area. We expanded our SUD, our, our children's provider network, as well as added 10 ABA providers, and we know we're hearing from providers that they want to, us to look at rates, and that's something that we need to do to make sure that our providers stay able to say, provide those services, so we'll be looking at that. And uh, the other thing I think is really critical is just really having our providers at the table with us so we can work with them, but also other stakeholders so we can make the system of care better for people. So we all need to work together in doing that. And we saw efforts that were successful when we do that. And finally, the workforce development. And, I, and it's hard to say, but it's the truth is that a lot of these efforts are really challenged by a need to really address some of our workforce issues in terms of having people trained to provide the specialty services that we provide, but also um, the rates that they receive to do the work that they do. So we're looking at it in several different ways and looking at, one, engaging our own staff here, the team here, to make sure that they are open and available to provide ideas so that we can develop programs that we know we have people within the organization have skill sets that we're not tapping into. So as we engage further, we can tap into some of the talents that we know our team members have, but also looking at our workforce to make sure that um, there's a fair wage for the work that we do. And we know the true heroes during the pandemic were direct care workers. So we want to make sure that they're paid a rate that they can live off of. And so the other thing with transportation, just a quick thing too, us pursuing transportation and working with the county with that millage also is going to be a resource for the workforce as well. So we're looking at it twofold, one for people we serve, but also for the people um, that serve the people we serve and work in those communities. So that's all I have this time and open to any questions you may have. Yes, Ms. Ruth. Thanks, Dana. I was just curious on, I think it's the third page for Oxford, how mm -hmm. it says um, 243 people applied for the Oxford insurance, and it says how much was paid out, but do you know the number of how many of those 243 were approved? You know what, I don't have that detail with me, but okay. I'll Can I'll we start including sure. it? Okay. And is that still ongoing? Is, yes. Yeah, okay. Actually, the county has extended it. It was supposed to end in, I believe, 
this month, end of this month, they're actually extending that to go until September okay. of 23. Are we in communication at all with the Resiliency Center through Common Ground that we they do, have there? We do. We do talk to them and have meetings with that group. Um, so that's ongoing work. And so we're not trying to fall over each other. So yeah. hopefully they're offering up um, this program as well for those families. So okay. we make sure we stay in communication with the school as well as the Resiliency Center. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have a question or a comment? All right. Um, next item on our agenda is board comments. Shall we start and go around the room? All right. Um, Mr. Young. Well, happy holidays to everybody. Thanks for the nice food. Thanks for the cake. Um, and uh, I think, Dennis, let's make sure we stay on the transportation piece. There's Everybody's very excited by the millage, but, you know, it's going to be in the details that we keep it glued together. So whatever you need, let us know. Ms. May? <laughs> Happy holidays. Um, thank you so much for the cake. Um, I, I agree. I think we need to really stay on top of the transportation. I am from a community that will actually not really be receiving much out of transportation. Boyd Lake, Highland, Commerce, Milford, we're a big black hole in that area. And I also believe that my area is a black hole for the ability to reach out for OCH and support when they need it. We're quite a ways away. It's, you know, a 45-minute drive, and when you're in crisis, no one's really going to go 45 minutes for that. So I just, I'm here if anyone needs to reach out for ideas for our area. Thank you. Ms. Root? Thank you for the reception tonight, and just want to say thank you for all the hard work you've done this year um, as a team, and I feel really grateful to to know you, to work by you, to be an advocate for a community. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Newman. I just want to uh, thank uh, the board and the staff for pulling together, working together, and making this, this year what it turned out to be. There have been a lot of successes. And there's still a lot of challenges, but um, I'm hopeful that 2023 will be one of the best years ever. So thank you. Happy holidays. Be safe, each and every one, until we meet again in January. Here, here. Thank you. Ms. Woodruff. I, too, would like to thank you for uh, tonight's reception, and thank you for the warm welcome. I'm one of the newer members to the board. I came aboard at the end of March and um, been on a learning curve in terms of all of the needs for the various um, recipients of services for the Oakland community. Um, I am hoping that 2023 will be a very successful year that we can build upon because um, the staff does do a lot of work and I'm hoping to uh, be able to continue to contribute to that uh, during the new year. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Torres. Um, just want to uh, recognize that, um, you know, I think this year we've seen a lot of growth in being able to be back more in person, um, being able to be out in the community. And I think we're starting to see the fruits of that labor and some of the numbers that we see. So I want to give recognition to the staff and everybody who's, you know, doing the work, the board. Um, and I think, uh, as Melkaya said, that, you know, the next year uh, is going to be a good one. And I think as things begin to lift with the pandemic, um, we can start to address more in person uh, so many of these mental health issues we're seeing within our adolescents and, um, and just people in general. So. Um, Thank you for all your work, your commitment this past year, and to the board and to our, our staff, our team. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Mr. Cowan. As I've uh, reflected on this uh, past year, you know, the board kind of lived and the organization with a sort of Damocles over its head with the Senate bills, which would have been a disaster. Um, we can say that now. We said it before. But at the same time, um, 
it creates some opportunity, I think, to spur all of us when you kind of face uh, uh, the abyss, uh, and then you have to look forward to the future. And I think we have a, a great opportunity to do a lot of good things in 2023. Um, we're getting COVID hopefully mostly behind us. Um, we've got a good good budget with uh, good things to, to do with the funds. Um, but despite the fact the board kind of had this sort of Damocles to deal with, those of you in the trenches uh, in our organization and the providers, you couldn't get distracted because you're inspiring and giving people hope each and every day. And because of that, I think it spurs all of us to want to do better uh, together. So to everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Cowan. Dr. I House. just want to echo the sen sentiments that were expressed by my co-board members. Um, I want to thank the staff here for the work that they, they do every day, the network providers, but most of all the direct care workers who uh, you know, brought us through uh, the COVID and all the other challenges with very little uh, reward uh, in terms of whatever could be done. But uh, I wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and look forward to, to 2023, and we continue the work. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hans. Uh, Mr. Furman. Again, a lot of it has already been said tonight, but I'd just like to thank um, not only uh, the staff uh, from OCHN, but also the staff of the core providers in, t in terms of um, putting out um, truthful messaging in terms of what 597 and 598 would have done. Um, and thank you to the public for um, all of your letters of support for the public mental health system and advocating to, to lawmakers, um, set, setting that message out there that um, work like that can and was obviously successful. Um, but again, much like... Um, other people have mentioned tonight, it's also an opportunity for us moving moving forward as well. Um, also, thank you very much for the uh, cake this afternoon. Um, and again, I'd just like to thank all of the, the staff and manpower hours that go into uh, these presentations for these meetings. Um, Month in and month out, they're also they're always very informative and keep us informed as a board. Um, finally, everyone stay safe and healthy and have a great holiday season. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Furman. Um, I want to take a minute and thank everyone. Uh, first, I'm going to hold this up. This is uh, for Steve Taub, Dr. Steve Taub, our most recent uh, board member who's step down um, for his 20 years of service. I just want folks to know that we have something for him. He's not able to make it tonight. The County Board of Commissioners recognized him last month. It was a very moving message. So is ours and our fondness for him. I know a number of you might have never met him, but I think most have, and most of us have worked with him over the last few years. And it's been really, it's gonna be hard not having him around um, for some of his guidance his perspective on things. So Steve, we're gonna miss you. I'm gonna drop this off at your house. Um, three of you, uh, Yvette, Sarah, and John, you know, you're the newbies this year. You're not the newbies next year. Um, we have a new we have a new person on the board, so I'm looking to the three of you plus the rest of us to take that new person under our wing and help us grow as we come out of the cave and we, you know, not done with COVID, but we'll be more in public in the public eye. So looking forward to all of you guys and thank you guys for joining the board and learning and getting involved and understanding what it is we do and how we do it. So thank you. Um, to the rest of you, Melkaya, you've been here since long before me. Thank you for taking me under your wing. So I appreciate it. Christine, thank you. 
Dr. Hans, thank you. Adam, thank you. John Paul, thank you. Dennis, thank you. Um, and Rena, who's not here tonight. So thank you guys. You've made my job and this board so easy. It's not been easy, but it's made it easier because this COVID's made it hard. So I really appreciate all your help. And again, earlier I said thank you to you all. Thank you to everyone that's your teams, not your staff, Dana, and not, not staff and leadership, your teams. Okay, I'll do that. So thank you, and to everyone out there who's serving the folks we serve. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Wish you a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Kwanzaa, um, Hanukkah, or if you don't celebrate anything, just that you celebrate life. So thank you. Um, and with that, um, there's nothing left on our agenda, so I'll call us into adjournment.